Good evening and welcome to uh, our city council meeting tonight. It is, uh, I was going to say March, that's not right. It is September 14th and it is, <laughs> I did, just for a second there. He's lost a bit of time. I am. It's been like March 20th, 2019 for about three years now. <laughs> yeah. So. yeah, it has. All right, let's go ahead and bring this meeting to order. And if you would all please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Boy, after all the 9-11 celebrations, that, you know, kind of just raises that uh, level of uh, significance. And roll call, please. Council Member Borelli? Here. Council Member No? Here. Council Member Saragossa? Here. Vice Mayor Taylor? Here. Mayor Thomas? I'm here. Thank you. And ceremonial matters. Let's see. Did we have? We don't. Proclamation. Yeah. Next week. Next week. Okay, good. Yeah. I saw that somewhere for a second there. All right, good. Moving on. Closed session report. Yes, thank you, Mayor. Uh, the City Council did meet in closed session on two items, conference with labor negotiators, with the PPOA bargaining unit, as well as Local 39, and the Council provided direction to staff. All right, thank you very much. And moving on to item number five, adoption of agenda. If we can get a motion to adopt it, unless somebody so wants moved. to make changes. Second. All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Moving on, announcements and presentations to the public. Brief comments by City Council. Councilman Verneau. All right. Councilman Sargos. Uh, nothing today. All right. Uh, Brelli. Just again to say thank you to every all the firemen and the law enforcement and everybody that. The, for what we've been going through, our citizens, everyone, and uh, just express my deepest sympathy for all the folks that have gone through such tragedies, and um, I, I'm sure we're going to hear more about. But I, I just, I, I, I just want to say thank you. <clears throat> I'll echo those sentiments, and I have nothing else to add. <laughs> <laughs> all right, um, let's see. There's a few things that went on this. I, I, I really appreciated and enjoyed the celebrations for 9-11. Um, whether it was the flags around town uh, that were put up, um, I think, well, I do know. <laughs> I don't have to think. I know that our city manager, myself, and several family members, and our city engineer spent time putting flags up uh, for 9-11 on, um, on Main Street and purchased a bunch of new flags to freshen them up and it looked really nice we also had some different flags representing the blue and red stripes for our firefighters and our police officers so that was that was a, a good thing um also had the opportunity to speak at the eas which they have a great ceremony and our fire chief uh, tim cordero did a great job of of doing a presentation to the school there and the staff yes yes um el dorado adventist school oh okay i know that wendy over the years has told me what a great program they have there for 9 11 and and recognition and so i was looking forward to it and it wasn't disappointing it was a it was a really nice Good. nice nice celebration um on another note uh cleve and i had the opportunity to meet with the new uh, Vice President of Relations, or was it? He's one of a few regional Vice Presidents. Regional Vice President, there we uh, go. For pg &E. <clears throat> For pg &E. And we met with him and Sarah Rashid, and we, we really had a really good discussion about what it looks like moving forward in the city here with pg and &E. uh, You know, three years ago they told us they have a 10-year plan, which means we're three years into a 10-year plan, so what's it look like to to move that forward and and actually one of the interesting things that came out of the meeting was they had um they talked about this new initiative under pg e to put 10,000 miles underground in the state of california in the next 10 years and so we said when do we want to start here in placerville because we're ready 
And uh, they actually said, now while they didn't guarantee us a spot on the list, they did say that, that in our region we are among those that have priority. And I don't want to misquote him because he, could, he would not tell us where we're at on that list, but he, he kind of told us different towns and such that were there. He also indicated we had 45 miles in our city for, uh, that needs undergrounding, and they've identified those miles. And, and that was an interesting, in, interesting uh, uh, statistic. One of the other things that they talked about was uh, we talked about and, and t wanted them to consider what, what, what it would look like to co-locate our fiber along with the, along with the uh, electrical at the same time. And so we had that conversation. It, it sounded interesting to them. It would be a way to share the cost of, the, of all the undergrounding without, uh, without uh, well, cutting the cost for both of us. Uh, what that looks like, that's a whole other negotiation. But I left the meeting feeling good about moving forward with them. Uh, they, they were very interested in expanding their vegetation management and getting more feedback from our community on an expanded vegetation management, where it's like 10 feet from the lines. Can they go 20 feet from the lines? Can they, you know, because personally, I said take the whole dang tree out by the time they get done. But they stop there because there's there's issues. But he was interested in having a community conversation about expanding our the vegetation management around the lines that helps protect it even more. And that's um, it would probably save us a lot of headaches down the road too. You know, it's always been a question of mine, and it's certainly um, in my neighborhood. I, I just keep seeing it because I, I border with the Catholic Cemetery, and they are they have a long line of trees. Mm -hmm. And so PG&E sends their company up, and they cut the limbs down, and it just encourages more growth. And I'm wondering, you know, how that was economic. A, that, it, did you talk mm -hmm. about that? That Dennis? was part of the conversation. It's something that that we probably can't get into in too much detail no, right now, but I'm just trying to report out from that meeting. But it's certainly worthy of conversation further with PG&E. Okay. Yep. And, uh, and I think that's all I have for now. And uh, Any, yes. Anything on PSPSs in terms of frequency, anything else they may have done to mitigate those? And I, since I, half I, of our county has burnt, if the necessity of those are still the same as they were pre- Caldor fire. Uh, they talked about how they have decreased the area that's PSPS, and they are actively reviewing what it would look like to expand their un the easiest approach to expand some undergrounding to reduce the PSPS uh, effect on on different parts of our community. Plasterville Drive has been been put in a different area than this area, so that area should stay lit up as long as Diamond Springs stays lit up. Mm -hmm. Um, did I miss anything there? I think that's those are the main things. Um, there's not not a lot of change other than I, I think they are doing a better going to do a better job of monitoring weather and trying to pinpoint more of the areas where you know we, our biggest concern that we've expressed to them over the last three years that we've experienced this is that for all I think it's out of nine or ten events I think there was one that had significant wind. And so we're saying, well, why are you turning our power off? There's, there's literally, in some of those days, literally, I walked outside. There was no wind. It was dead still. And so I think they're, they've, you've probably seen the advertisements. They've had them out that they've increased the number of weather stations, et cetera. They're trying to do a better job of monitoring that. The, the issue still, I think, is somewhat going to be, though, that we are still tied in with a much larger area. They've done some work to decrease that. Um, but until they can uh, reduce those areas, be able to, so that they can uh, more better be able to turn off those areas that actually have the wind and leave the other areas on, uh, it's still going to be a, a little bit of a problem. They're not there yet. There's still they're, quite a bit of work. They're putting in they more do. switches and things right. to move the electricity right. around right. more safely. They've done quite a bit of work in mm -hmm. our community over the last year. For example. Uh, the area around the hospital now is on the circuit that will allow it to stay on uh, with the generator that they start up up on Broadway. But it does <coughs> not. Uh, um, with so the PG&E anyway, generator? The PG&E generator, yeah, it will keep, keep them powered up. So, uh, so just a curious question. So does the generator then at the hospital also kick in when 
50 or do you know that that will kick in um, in the interim until because there's always there's probably they've got it down to about 30 minutes to change mm -hmm. over from okay. the jet from the power to the generator okay. so there's a break in there uh, but the hospital has generators that kick right. on to protect during that time and then when when the power comes back from the PG&E generators the hospital generators will shut down okay so all right thank you Cleve so long story short we had a good meeting with PG&E and uh, moving on to the consent calendar all, I, all matters listed under the consent calendar are considered at a routine and will be enacted by one motion by roll call vote by the city council. If anybody wishes to remove an item for discussion, please say so. Uh, the read of the full text uh, for all resolutions will be waived unless a council member requests otherwise. Can we get a motion to approve the consent calendar? I'll move. Second. All right. And can so we open it up for public comment? So we, so let's, since we're here. We normally do it that way and then open up for public comment. I don't know why it was done that way before me. I do that. Is that okay? Or should we do it ahead of time? Um, so my preference is that if the council wishes to remove something from the consent, they can ask that first and then we open up public comment and then we take the motion only because the Brown Act um, does require that before any deliberation or, or motions be made that the public be allowed the opportunity to make a comment. All right, so I will, because it causes you to jump every time I do that. So <laughs> I will we'll try and switch that around then. So let's go ahead. Uh, any uh, public comment is open? No. Consent calendar is opened up for public comment at this time. Anybody wishing to comment, please uh, step forward. Uh, yes, please. Okay, so there's a portion of our of our agenda that is consent calendars. It's and if you want to talk on any of these items on the consent calendar, now's the time. If you want to talk about things in general, that's not on our that's not on our agenda. That's coming up in just a second. All right. So seeing nobody for the consent calendar, we'll go ahead and close public comment and bring it back for discussion or roll call vote. Or yes, any discussion? All right, roll call vote, please. Councilmember Borelli? Aye. Councilmember No? Aye. Councilmember Saragossa? Aye. Vice Mayor Taylor? Aye. Mayor Thomas? Aye. All right, moving on to item number eight, public comment on non-agendized items. This portion of the meeting is reserved for persons wishing to address our council on any matter not on the agenda that is within the subject matter jurisdiction of the city council. State law prohibits us from taking action on any item except by special action of the city council under special circumstances. I reserve the right to limit the speaker's time to three minutes, and you are not allowed to make personal attacks or in, on individuals or make comments which are slanderous or which may invade an individual's personal property, uh, privacy. Uh, with that, we are going to open it up for public comment at this time. <laughs> My name is Janie Henderson. I live on Noel Court. Uh, for 37 years I have and where Mallard ends and uh, Coo Water Creek Road uh, begins is where I uh, just around the corner is Noel Court and so um, uh, Mr. Zeller has been kind enough to speak with me about my concern and a couple of times so right behind my home is a um, piece of land property I don't know how big but it kind of goes up the hill toward those homes you know that are built up there on Mallard anyway and then uh, it's uh, apparently from Mr. Zeller's uh, information to me, it's owned by the water treatment plant, which is across the road from behind my house. So one spark, and that is one, one spark. Well, let me go back up, please. There's thick vegetation, dry, has stacked for years, and uh, dead trees down, uh, limbs off of trees falling, you know, and it's just, it's, it, and my insurance company said, remove some of your trees or we won't renew your policy. So I have the receipt if you want to see it, $3,700, $3,700 I just paid to a company here to come and cut out half my oak trees in my backyard. It was sickening to lose those trees. They said, trees can't touch. I said, all over this county trees are touching. I said, what you're doing is so that you've paid out claims, you making sure no one else files one. She said, that's right. So I thought, well, I unfortunately got a bad insurance, wrong insurance. It's a big company, but anyway. But so I'm just wanting to say that one spark and all of that takes off and my house is gone. I don't care how many trees I took out. 
And so I have an acre there. And so I just was ask, speaking with Mr. Zeller about what can be done about that. And the insurance company will talk to the city. So I'm talking to the city. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Jane. Appreciate the comment there. And Mr. Mayor, I'd like to also follow up on that really quick if I could. Um, can, can we go ahead and do that at the end? Sure. You bet. Thank you. All right. Anybody else wishing to make a comment during public comment? All right. Good evening, Sue. Sue Rodman, Placerville resident. And my comment is also about fuels. And I think that now is the time to contact those large property owners that still need to reduce their hazardous fuel loads. We need to put them on notice to either clean up or pay the bill for the city to contract the work. Because without enforcement, our vegage, vegetation ordinance isn't effective. And without enforcement, you put all of us in Placerville at risk. And the same thing goes for Placerville's property that we own. We need to get that done. Uh, I think the uh, Caldor fire should be a real wake up call for us. Thank you, Sue. Hello, uh, Tammy Dans, uh, Clay Street, Mosquito Bus Station. Y'all, I believe y'all know me. Um, <laughs> I've been talking to the uh, transit department and trying to get these cameras updated or improved. They've been in there a few years, but like that fish eye that's there um, doesn't do um, police or anybody else justice because it just comes straight down to um, the seating. Um, it's been a year ago this month that my house was broken into by an individual from the bus station. It took over a week for the camera to be downloaded um, for the officer to see who it was. And if we'd known that day um, or the next day, we could have arrested the person because he was still sleeping at the bus station. Um, um, I've, the Plasville Police Department's been doing really good, doing some extra patrols. The um, drug and homeless is definitely increased. I don't believe it's gonna get any better, so everybody's busy and trying to be neighborhood watch and protecting everybody. Um, to kind of speed it up a little bit, um, the maintenance on the bus station, I don't believe much has been done since it's been built. It's definitely falling apart. And if I believe you guys, I know we talked about this before and everybody's told me it's in the works, but when? Because we have a nice brand new looking building it tends to not be vandalized as much, or maybe it's protected more. I don't, I don't know which way, you know. But it's becoming an eyesore and it's definitely falling apart. Um, I know there's not very many maintenance workers for, you know, that are working for the city right now. I believe there's open vacancies. You guys used to have like six employees and now they just hired a third guy, you know, so I can see that their hands are tied because there's not too many of them. You know, the trash and everything else is getting bad. I try to do my part in picking it up. And Plasville Station 2, that's supposed to be happening soon. It keeps being told it's being bid and when. Because, <laughs> you know, sooner we get that done, it'll help alleviate some of the other homeless issues too that we have. And I can't wait for the next Park and Recs meeting. They all keep getting canceled. Don't know what's up with that. But, anyways, thank you for your time. Thank you. Tammy. Good evening, Mayor Thomas, Council Members. Good evening. Ed Ingram, her husband. <laughs> Make it short and sweet. I'm sure you all know it. Apple Hill season's open again. Just checking to see if the trip to Green is still on schedule for what has been scheduled as a test pilot program. And being able to control the side streets, Clay Street, Mosquito, Dimity, any of those that gets impacted as well, plus downtown. If you guys have kind of a plan still adventured for that for this season. And also not to forget uh, Chief Wren, PD, guys are doing a great job out there helping with the problems at Mosquito, I appreciate it very much. Talked to uh, Gardetto, I believe it was. Goodell. Goodell, yes, I just emailed him, a email this morning. 
and an appreciation of what they're doing with some future suggestions. I hope it will help you guys and help everybody in the area. Um, referring to what my wife said about the bus station, it just needs some lipstick and rouge on that thing. Really bad <laughs> taken care of. All right, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Ed. Sure. And Jonathan Gainsborough, good evening, Mayor and Council. I would really still like to see a proclamation of gratitude to the fire and rescue and police uh, for the safety of our city, a proclamation from the Council. And I'd like to include uh, also to thank God for protecting all of us. Uh, I think that would be a appropriate thing to come from the city mayor and city council considering what could have happened uh, I'm going to try to leave before the item about the American Rescue Plan uh, Act Jane tells me that in the fine print the funding for the the hostess or for the navigation center has been set us is still being reserved but is not on that actual agenda i'm hoping to get to a men's bible study at six which all of us need but especially me a preacher of the word we all do um i just want to just encourage you all to move forward and don't expect the county to lead i expect they to part expect them to partner um, but they don't have the courage to say we realize that we are 15 or 20 years behind on this homeless issue. That took a lot of courage. It took a lot of chutzpah. It took a lot of heart and intelligence to realize that with Martin Boise uh, currently, uh, uh, you all are repeating it back to me, which I'm glad to hear, we're not going to be able to control the fire factor with the county just putting ARPA funds on the uh, Pollock Pines Motel. 26 rooms doubled up is 50. That's 10% of the Western Slope homeless. And so that's not going to satisfy. So I'm hoping that you don't get pulled into the, well, we're doing a navigation center or we're going to try to make a navigation center out of the Pollock Pines Motel. Um, putting my glasses on just as far as hostess, when I came back from America's largest tiny home village, which I still encourage you to, to look up Community First Village to watch their 2020 video tour, Community First Village. Uh, Austin, it's the pride of Austin. They're, they're individually housing, not just in tents on gravel. 450 people expanding with the city's approval to 1,400. So when you all spoke about how can we keep people from out of coming out of county coming here, and you remember I said, well, Alan Graham told me when I interviewed with him, the founder of it, he Jonathan, said, Jonathan, we're hitting our number here. Okay, they have they have to have been in the city registered, recognized as homeless. Gotcha. Finally, I just want to say these. Jo Jonathan, we no. got to get going here. Buddy. Okay, all right. Thank you very much. So keep, keep moving ahead and right. be, be brave right, and thank you. let's create it. God bless you. Okay, I'm gonna try and do this. <laughs> Good evening, my name is Jane McGinnis. Please forgive me if I stop breathing in front of you. The smoke caused some massive bronchitis, but I wanted to follow up with a couple of thoughts. Uh, first of all, the Austin, Texas ordinance that allows this Community First Village says that a homeless person to be considered for residence there has to have been registered as a homeless person in Austin in their county for one year or more. And that is certainly something that is uh, an amazing ask in this uh, society that we live in of give me now, give me everything. Uh, at the same time, I'm urging you to recognize the truth of what was just said. If you don't lead, nobody's going to. Because I know where the smaller part of the partnership 
but I think it's the more vibrant part of the partnership and the more demanding part of the partnership that it be something good or let's not do it at all. Um, it was nice news, I guess, two weeks ago to find out that the, the total ask went from a million and a half down to 500,000, but then when you read the program that they're starting with, it's mats on gravel on asphalt covered by tents with no electricity, no cooling, no warming, no beds, no roofs, no shelter. Um, I'm not sure that that gets us clear of Martin Boise, uh, and that's gonna be an argument for another day. But I would say, don't wait for the county to decide what form this needs to take, please push for a full partnership and make sure they hear your voices on this. Because I think the members of the city council are more educated in this issue. Um, I'm not gonna say have stronger hearts for it, though my suspicion is perhaps that's true. Um, but um, I believe this is where we're going to find the people that are gonna make sure that whatever is given, whatever is funded, is funded for something that is worth having, not mats on gravel, on asphalt, under a tent. Um, I guess that's all I wanted to say, is just make sure that we are not the silent partner on this thing just because we're the smaller entity. Thank you. Thank you, Jane. All right, seeing no more, um, no more people approaching the Podium. We're going to go ahead and close public comment at this time and bring it back to the council. Uh, Mr. Zeller, I think you had one comment on, what was that? Oh, on the property. Yes, that's correct, Mr. Mayor. Um, the uh, property that the first speaker uh, was referring to is actually part of um, the original CAL FIRE grant that we had, and that's um, eight acres uh, in and around the water treatment plant. Uh, so that's eight acres of the 77 acre treatment that we had originally proposed and we're still uh, working toward with other funding um, And also we are addressing some uh, issues of kind of the shabbiness of um, Plasterville station and ha we're having a meeting tomorrow about uh, what to do as far as um, paint repainting and getting that um, Building back up to uh, what it originally looked like. Thanks Thank you, Terry you answered, you got two of my checks. And then um, trip, trip to green, we have, this year, for this year we have canceled our um, pilot project of trip to green, uh, mostly because the trip to green pilot project was to collect data for future uh, programs. And the data that we would collect this year would be impacted by the fire, by the closure of Highway 50, by a variety of different uh, uh, things out of our control that just would make the data useless in comparison to what would be a normal year with the um, Tahoe being operational the uh, the National Forest as well as you know the truly uh, a busy Apple Hill season which it, so far we haven't had so for this year it is canceled I think we are looking forward to doing it next year but I don't know what that looks like because we haven't actually had that discussion yet but uh, Correct. Um, okay. If I may, Mr. Mayor, mm -hmm. um, we are looking in the next month to schedule next year's dates, and uh, you're right on track for all those reasons that we uh, pushed it back one year. You know, closure of Highway 50 doesn't allow the access through to Tahoe, which generated a fair amount of the recreational traffic, as well as the impacts uh, towards Apple Hill. We just haven't really seen that um, surge go through town. Um, the other component of this is also the um, public uh, emotional care component and that is if we were to do this trip the green pilot project right now it would likely be received as in a oh my goodness there's another evacuation um, so just really taking care of our uh, community's um, emotional and mental health after the last month uh, not wanting to send them into unnecessary panic or concern mm -hmm. and, I, and I think I discussed this last meeting but the upside to this was that we had a good um, we were able to use our trip to green um, program and all of our documents to uh, in a very short order have our freeway closed and be able to use it for evacuation uh, of the 
Pollock Pines area and get all that traffic moving through town that was backed up for miles. So uh, good, good job there. Um, I think that's it for public comment. Is there anything for a written communication? Nothing for a written communication this week. All right, thank you very much. We have no items pulled from our consent calendar. We have no ordinance on tap for, the, for this evening. No public hearings, so we're moving on discussion and action items. And, action, and item number 12.1, adopt a resolution approving 890,166 in a budget appropriations from the American Rescue Plan Act, or ARPA, fund in the accordance with ARPA guidelines as shown in attachment A. And Mr. Morse, I'm gonna turn this over to you. Thank you, Mayor and Council. As you recall, on uh, August 31st, uh, Council held a meeting to review, this was your second meeting you've held to review ARPA funding and uh, potential projects to be funded with that, that money. Um, based on that meeting, we have, um, I believe, come back with what your recommendation was, which basically uh, funded all of the projects with the exception of uh, three that were some high-priced high projects, um, which included the broadband project, the homeless project, and then the Canal Street project. Uh, Besides those, we've recommended funding um, all of the other projects that were included in there. Some of those, uh, we, we did some did a little, something a little bit different. We recommended uh, another funding source for those rather than ARPA funding, but they will still be funded. Uh, we mentioned in there that in the report that we have uh, PARSAC, our, which was our uh, risk management organization that we're with for our pooled insurance. Uh, which recently changed over and joined with another uh, um, pool uh, to become, uh, I'm going to Sira. Sira. Sira, trying to remember the name. So PARSAC is no more, but um, we had some funding in there that they gave us that was left over, that was funding those programs. And so we're recommending a couple of these things be funded uh, with that funding. Now, I wanna just mention quickly those things that we're recommending uh, that be funded with that are ongoing programs. Uh, for example, the, uh, the budget software and the uh, human resources software, recruitment software. Those both would be considered ongoing programs. Hopefully they're very successful and we wanna continue them from year to year, but those do have annual cost to, to renew those subscriptions for those programs. So we just need to be aware of that. The other one that we are did recommend the ARPA funding for is the, um, the GIS software, ESRI software. Uh, that one is also an ongoing cost that we hope to be very successful and make good use of in the city and, and show its value. And then we will come back and ask for, during the budget process, uh, the funding to renew that, that subscription also. So the, just to review quickly, um, the first item is the uh, four by four pickup for the police department. I uh, worked with Chief Wren on this and how we could do this. If you recall during your budget, you allocated $20,000 for a, an administrative vehicle for the police department. In discussions with him, we determined that this was a, a higher priority and he was in agreement to take the $20,000 We'll take an additional 15,000 from ARPA funding, 35,000, and we can fund that uh, that pickup. So that's what why the the difference from the initial 40,000 down to the 15,000. We feel comfortable that we can easily fund that with 35,000 um, dollars. The next one is the um, command module um, insert for the radios. Uh, we're recommending funding of that immediately. Uh, the Ford Interceptor SUVs, the patrol vehicles, two patrol vehicles, uh, again, recommending approval of, of funding those. Uh, actually, and, and just to mention, you, you actually approved those already. We included in this because we wanted to include it in the final list with the resolution that adopts the funding for us. So you did already approve those, but they're still on this list. Uh, the next one is $619,000 for um, fuel reduction programs. Uh, currently, the way we have that slated is $409,000 in year one, $209,000 in year two. Um, when we get down to the end, we can talk about that if there's some adjustment we want to make to that to bring more of that funding into this first fiscal year, we can talk about that. Uh, the Lions Park Large Shelter, $63,000 uh, is 
funded. Uh, we still think there may be opportunities to look at um, uh, groups like the Lions Club and talk to them and see if maybe they want to help fund that and maybe we don't use the full 63,000 but that's uh, we, we will still approach them so <laughs> um, town hall emergency uh, operations center so basically would be remodeling making the communications uh, audio visual etc um, in this facility uh, much better than it is now and, and plus there's some other security things with our doors that are very old that, that need to be replaced and, and made more more functional for security. Um, pool sand filter replacement, we talked about that at the meeting, uh, just uh, that's over 10 years old and way past when it should be replaced to operate most efficiently, so that, that would be done. Uh, the GIS, uh, GIS software, we talked about that a little bit last time. Uh, the abilities that it would give many of our departments to um, for mapping and other things that they can do to do better presentations and have better data in the field and et cetera, uh, that that program will allow. So we are recommending funding there. Um, the corporate, corporation yard revitalization. Um, we did recommend funding on that. We'd reduced it from 800 down to 600,000. Um, we think that that may be close. However, we do want to recognize that we, if, if the, we do need additional funding, uh, we do have reserves in both the water and sewer fund it would be very appropriate to use a small amount of each of those uh, up to a hundred thousand dollars if we had to go clear back up to the eight hundred thousand that could come out of uh, our water and sewer funds to assist with that program the other part of that that we've recommended um, and we've gone back and forth a little bit on that is that uh, this first year would we would only spend a hundred thousand and that would be putting together plans and specs of how we want to build that and what we want to do and so the main construction would take care uh, take place in uh, the next part of the second year of funding um, canal street of course as you know we we pulled that one out we'll continue to look at funding for that but the, no funding was recommended for canal street um, the public safety building that funding is there we did put that in year two um, I think we're comfortable with that, Rebecca, I'm looking at you. I mean, we want to move forward with that as quickly as we can, but we feel that we still have to finish the current study that we're on, and by the time we get to really spending the majority of the funding, it's probably going to be mostly in year two, so that's why we, we did that. Um, moving on to the next page, the city citywide um, marketing program that was proposed by the uh, Chamber of Commerce uh, we did recommend funding for that that would be in year one uh, broadband fiber was removed for recommended funding at this time and I'll talk a little bit more about that in the end um, the in computer equipment replacement that one was already approved in your in your last uh, meeting when you met that's our our annual computer replacement program that was uh, eliminated last year due to the pandemic that we want to use this to catch up uh, the applicant tracking software, I talked about that. We, we identified the, uh, the other funding for that, but that program will still be funded. The Homeless Navigation Center, we are not re recommending any funding at this time because we don't know what that cost is going to be. But as we get down to the end, I'll talk a little bit more about, uh, about that program. Uh, the automated water meters is the other one that we've eliminated from funding at this time. Um, I really feel that there's a lot of money in the money they're talking about both at, on the state and federal level that we may have opportunities to look at funding for that down the road. Um, public work radios, we talked about that last time that we think we're going to be able to get those from uh, a donation that will will meet that need. If not, we will we can come back and talk about it, but we think we're, we're good there. Um, sewer and water bill assistance program, uh, that's to help people that um, were because of employment loss or whatever, we're not able to pay uh, their utility bill during the pandemic. This would be a program we will set up to assist them uh, going forward. Um, financial dashboard slash budget development software. Um, we're recommending this one, but also uh, it would be funded through that FAR PARSAC funding that we have rather than the ARPA funding. That's the other one that is also ongoing funding that we will get. So putting all those together, um, we we still have a balance of approximately seven hundred and sixty thousand uh, dollars that we have not recommended for projects at this time. Um, there are some projects in here that we have discussed, um, such as the broadband fin funding, the homeless funding, et cetera. Uh, but we don't have solid numbers for what those may be at this time. So we're recommending that 
we not put money into those at this time, but hold that option to come back and, and uh, uh, put funding into those as we know more and what, what those may be. Um, there's nothing, we have quite a bit of time to spend this money. There's nothing to say that we have to allocate it at, at this time. Um, so uh, with that, um, the, the second uh, spreadsheet that you have in your, you have the resolution and then attached to that is the spreadsheet that shows what we are recommending uh, for the first year funding, and that's based on what, what we just provided to you. Um, and then we would come back with another resolution to, uh, as part of the budget process probably next year, to allocate the second year, second year funding. Um, we will also, assuming that between now and, you know, uh, next spring, we determined to allocate additional funding based on the money that we have, the 760, we would come back to you at that time with a resolution and, and recommending for that allocation. Uh, there is also the option of considering allocating additional funding to some of these programs, and specifically I'd look at the vegetation management if you wanted to consider that. As you know, um, I've, I've sent that out and I'll make this announcement to the public, our vegetation management um, grant through CAL FIRE that we applied for uh, was not awarded. We did not get funding. We were very disappointed in that. The other part of that is that um, the uh, Placerville Fire Safe Council also was not awarded their grant, and they had a very comprehensive and a, a good grant. Um, I will tell you that I've already been contacted by the Placerville Fire Safe Council by a couple of them uh, to consider if the city may have a way to help them fund some of what they were looking at doing. Uh, I, I have a meeting set up with one of them, uh, Mark Eckberg, for, for next week, yeah. and I'd like to talk to him about that. Um, our money currently is focused on cleaning up our city properties, which is very important. Uh, the things that they were looking were uh, at were, um, what do you call them, Patty, help me out, the barriers the, to where we would, uh, uh, fire breaks, if you will, uh, throughout the city to, you know, protect the city if a fire did break out outside our city. So that, that's what their, theirs was focused on, different than what, that what, than what we are doing. So um, I'll just throw that out. Um, I think I've explained all that. Um, if there are any questions that any staff can ask about any of those programs or, or projects, we're happy to answer those. And with that, I'll turn it back to you, Mayor. Thank you very much. <clears throat> I think the remaining fund fund amount is 446, 483. You were saying 760? For, for the current year. For the two years combined, it's 760. Gotcha. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Um, any questions for staff? I have a couple. Um, on the... Um, the homeless program, did we, I missed the, the special meeting uh, that the Board of Supervisors did on the fire, but do we have any sense of when the they may come back with a number? I know, I mean, obviously the Caldor fire threw everything off right. and um, and still will be because for the foreseeable future, mm -hmm. but was there any sense of when well, that date might be? Or we, are we the, only, the only thing we have right now is their next scheduled meeting to discuss that. Um, that Chief Wren and I will attend is not till October 22nd. Mm. Okay. Um, and then, and one more, quick. well, I'll come back. I, I don't remember Mike's question number two. Now. We got time. Oh, go ahead. Um, for those items that are subscriptions with ongoing mm -hmm. um, costs, I believe that we talked about taking those costs from multiple different funds, so it's not all out of the general fund. Is that is, is that the case? It's pretty low dollar amounts. So. Yeah, they are, and and yes, they probably can be spread because um, all of those functions are ones that we use throughout all of our departments. So the the human resource recruitment software, the budget software, and the ESRI or the GIS software, all of those. Um, yes, can be spread amongst departments, right, Dave? You're good with that? Correct. Okay. So if the, um, at, at a, the federal level, mm -hmm. if the two fac the, uh, uh, factors uh, finally come together and approve an infrastructure, which I know I'm dreaming, but um, say they do, um, 
so after the decision, how long before we would find out? And that would come down to state level and then to, it, it, or do you know uh, at this point? I'm looking over at Michael. He may know better than I do, yeah. but I don't know the specifics of how that might be distributed or My guess it would follow along the same lines. I, I, what I've seen so far is it would follow along the same lines as, um, as with the ARPA funds. And because we're a smaller, like if you're a larger city like Los Angeles, you may get a direct amount. Uh, but on smaller cities, it probably come to the state. I don't know if it would come in two, you know, two or four or how many um, uh, payments, but it likely would be matriculated through the, the state down to us. And then there would be those individual pots of competitive dollars as well. I haven't heard, Michael. So you think there will be some uh, distribution based on similar to ARPA? Because I'd, I thought it was all going to be com more competitive. More based no, I think there will be some... Will um, formula okay. money in there as well um, they have well the 27th is a date we'll know a lot more the 27th <laughs> the, the 20, September 27th okay and that's when they're supposed to have the vote on the 3.5 trillion and then immediately the the one trillion dollar um, uh, fund after that which was a the uh, agreement that Speaker Pelosi had agreed to yeah. so right now you know, you're hearing senators talk about not wanting to agree to the 3.5 trillion uh, so that's where the the debate will still be. I think, you know, whether it's three or three point five or two point six, they're going to come up to some number, and then they're going to vote on the one trillion dollar package as well. So I still think a multi trillion dollar package will will come forward. So there's no, um, I mean, there's no way that it, it's so indecisive that we can't do an ask like now. I mean, you can't prepare no. for anything and there's no way to i mean it came up on in sake hawk because our, our our federal lobbyists mm -hmm. were talking about this and I'd like to try to add some type of um ask for a specific thing in our areas and they said it was too too far down the line oh, already okay. to add add, add a, essentially like a pork for lack of a better term a pork project yeah. uh in, into the debate at this point it okay. would just be those those buckets and then you know if we would qualify for them okay thank you all right, any further questions at this point? All right, I'm gonna go ahead and open it up for public comment at this time on, on these items. If you have any comments, please uh, step forward. Placerville resident, Major H&L Committee. Um, and I think that this looks pretty good. I think keeping uh, about 30% in reserve allows the Placerville some flexibility to respond to the sheriff's proposal for a managed campsite and other city needs that come down. I'm glad to see some creative funding to get the 4x4 truck for the police department. They explained that to get to homeless camps requires a four-wheel drive. And none of us would want to put hazardous waste collected there in the passenger space of the regular SUV police vehicles. I'm also really glad to see funding for the geographic information systems. GIS is vital to get all the city infrastructure tracked accurately. You can't manage something if you don't know where it is. Hooray, hooray, to at least get a start on revitalization for the corporation yard. We need to support these city employees. They are the ones doing the really, really hard work for us. They get the call at 2 a.m. on our, a Sunday afternoon to fix the geyser from the water line break or wade into the mud and sewage when one of our ancient sewer pipes are polluting our streets or yards. I've seen much needed corporation yard funding scrapped from budget after budget. It is past time for the city to give these workers the respect and facilities they need to do the hard work that really keeps our city running. And the fuel reduction treatment is, of course, one that I'm going to talk about. It's much lower than what's needed to address the hazardous vegetation in Placerville with, the, with no Cal Fire grant for either the city or the, the Passive Fire Safe Council, then it's up to us. We're on our own to get the city's hazardous fuel under control. And it will no good, do no good to have a marketing program or, or broadband if the city burns in the next Caldor fire. 
ask the people in Grizzly Fire in, in Grizzly Flat how much good a marketing program will do for them. We need to put our money where the biggest threat and greatest needs are. So perhaps some of those alloc unallocated funding can go to hazardous bed reduction. I certainly hope so. We really need to do it around the, the water treatment plant is one area. Goldbug Park is another one. Walk around the city and you can see them everywhere. So please, let's get this one under, under some control. Those are my comments. Thank you, Sue. Jonathan Gaines, where I said I wasn't going to speak, but I am. September, October, November, we've got 500 Western Slope homeless. I'm glad that funds are being set aside from ARPA, American Rescue Plan. Rescue, American Rescue Plan. What are we going to do with our 500 homeless with no nomadic shelter? How can we as Christians or just decent, intelligent, blessed, creative, committed leaders face this winter Daniel, that she ran into in a post office last year, had a double heart attack under the Mosquito Bridge after his wife died. I beg you to, to, to move and produce some shelter for these 500 human beings in the name of God, in the name of Jesus Christ, or whatever God you worship. He says, I was homeless. And you took me in or you gave me no shelter. Yeah, I'm going to my Bible study. I'll leave. My time's running out. But your time is running out too. God is going to hold you accountable for those 500 homeless. You have a fairgrounds. Any, build, any building with a roof can be used with an emergency statement, an emergency declaration for at least the winter. You're going to leave 500 homeless people out there, women and children. There's like a 90 or 100 women, homeless women. Yeah, I'm going to stop before my time is up. You've got to do something this winter. Listen to God talking to you in your heart. The community is expecting you to do something to rescue these people this winter. Do it, please. Anybody else wishing to address the council on uh, the ARPA funding? All right, seeing none, we'll bring it back to the council for further discussion and a vote. I'd uh, like to talk to the council. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, specifically, I want to talk about vegetation management. Um, the 619000 that we have in the budget right now is to clear the 76 acres that we have. That's a one-time deal. That's not ongoing maintenance. That doesn't help uh, the homeowners. It doesn't bring us the equipment to do the ongoing maintenance. Um, those are the things that were in the grant that uh, didn't get approved. So I want the council to consider um, the other part of the grant, which is $7,500 in chainsaws, the light duty, utility tractor, the 14-foot boom mower attachment, the compact track loader, the masticator, that all comes up to $238,323. And then if we included the $100,000 that uh, we also asked for to help our homeowners who need assistance, that would be $338,323. Um, I think it's really important that we plan for the future and don't just do this as a one-time deal. The fire, I mean, everything's gonna grow back and we're gonna have the same issue. And right now we have an opportunity to plan for that future and, and bring in the equipment and the things that we need to. And so um, 
instead of <clears throat> setting aside just the 760,000, I'd like you to consider the 338, which was in the original grant to further help with the fire suppression. Thanks. So one of you know we kind of during my meeting prep with Cleve we had that discussion about what it would look like to do that, and one of the issues that came up was having staffing available to actually perform. You know we could have the equipment sitting there, but do we have the staffing to do it? Because right now our staffing is fully invested in just everything they're doing today, whether it's sewer breaks or or the maintenance you know we have deferred maintenance right now as it is if you look at the uh, mosquito park and ride and so I, I think it's a worthwhile investment if we have the staffing to perform the actual duties now I think that we'd have to put more thought into what the next step would be once we had it sitting in the courtyard to put it to work and and I don't know that we're there yet are we there yet, or what would that look like? Let's say that was those that equipment was dropped in your courtyard, and I'm kind of putting you on the spot. But do you really struggle with uh, getting the, the staffing to do that? Because we'd actually have to add one to two people just to use it. We we would need a lot more bodies to run the list of equipment that you have. Mm -hmm. Right now, we have a we we do have a lot of nice equipment up there, mm -hmm. and um, it doesn't get utilized to its full potential just because we're constantly in a pretty much emergency mode. Mm -hmm. You know, if it, we, we try and plan to the best of our abilities and uh, it gets, it changes a lot. Like today we had a water leak over here, right on Main Street that yeah. kicked off um, sewer issue over on SD, or uh, I'm sorry, uh, Maureen, but it, it changes a lot in there. So this water issue there caused a sewer issue no, no the, 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 okay the, the, those okay. issues wow, that's those, issue. those <laughs> issues were unrelated they, okay. they were just separate events that okay, were got you. so we we could plan to the best of our ability to say mm -hmm. hey we're gonna patch potholes over on ben right. with a big cut like that and then mm -hmm. changes pretty quick so, so every I, every day i don't disagree with what you're asking for okay but on that same yes. topic i mean a lot of this property is park and rec property i mean are we not able to use park and rec staff to help with that also I mean, 40% of this is in Goldbug Park. I'll let Terry talk to that, but his staffing is even lower than I think it the next is. <laughs> That's the only thing. Well, I mean, we applied for this grant. Why did we apply for this grant if we didn't have the staffing to do it in the first place? I guess I'd like an explanation for that. We had the opportunity to get it, and hopefully we could staff up over time um, if we did. So one of the one of the things, and I, and I know that uh, you you have a meeting with Mark Egbert, and actually I, I was I was already I was also reaching out to him to have a discussion with him because I know he's very active in getting grants and and finding ways to uh, actually effective in getting grants and what he and what he does. That's kind of what he does. So um, along those lines, I don't know if it'd be worth. I don't know that this could be an appropriate investment to, but. At some point, we should probably talk to him. Oh, we are. We are. Yeah. 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 Dennis, he he volunteered. Um, he, he sent a uh, an email and volunteered to meet with Fire Safe Council. Uh, he went over the application that they put mm -hmm. in, and he said it was excellent. And but there's there, you know there's all kinds of things that he knows. Like you say, he's very experienced, and suggestions he's going to have to maybe do it differently or better the mm -hmm. next time around. So okay. I, I was also interested in what Terry had to say. I thought he was about to speak over there. <laughs> uh, you were asking me about the staffing? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the opportunity with this grant was to get the equipment um, in, in preparation for uh, being able to start to use our staff um, to uh, hit and maintain those areas that we have, those 77 acres. And um, there's still some uh, efficiencies I think we can still uh, be working toward, and we're going to be doing that regardless if we, if we get the equipment or not. But it was, it's my mid, mid to long-term goal to um, create some more efficiencies in our apartment department, uh, especially par uh, the parks division, so we do have a little bit of, um, a little bit of extra uh, staffing that we can put at these things. But right now we're still, uh, we just took on a new staff person in June or in, um, in August. I mean, it, it seems to me on, on this issue that 
I mean, waiting for staffing could never come um, and probably would cost more on when we, we don't have the, you know, if, if funding goes down. I mean, is this something where we can look for contract work on, on this, um, a, a service so that we're getting ahead or at least not falling as far behind? Um, I just don't know that. And then we're not having to buy the, we're not actually having to buy the equipment. We're just adding that into the cost of the service, at least to try to get us to where we're in a better position. One of the things I'll mention is that our hope is that with this, the funding that we have for contract services in here now, a lot of that will be involved, will involve removing some of the, the trees that are in there. Um, and that doesn't have to be done every year. Uh, it's more the low growth and et cetera that has to be. So my thought was that a lot of what we need to be, hopefully we can get a lot of that done this year in, in terms of thinning and creating that, you know, and living up and et cetera, that work. Um, so that when we come back in future years and have to contract to do more of that work, it's not it's not six hundred thousand dollars every year, hopefully. Um, and you know, I think some of the money. I think it's Terry, one hundred and fifty thousand is the goat program, <laughs> and hopefully that's successful. That that's that could be a major part of what could be done on some of these pro the, some of the bigger properties like uh, Goldbug Park. I'm thinking this steep hillside down here on Lower Main Street and things like that. Once you have that first cleaned up, the canopy brought up the way we want it to be done, um, and the, the trees thinned out to where, you know, the dead or the, uh, where they're too thick and stuff that, that that's taken care of, uh, hopefully that process going forward is not as big of a process in, in terms of, you know, and what's necessary. we wouldn't need necessary. a chipper. We got goats. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. are, we, are we getting cities at city goats? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, the, the line item as it reads, you know, says for, the homeless shelter and broadband could we just more generalize you know that 76,000 760,000 to look at the priority projects next year when maybe we'll have some more answers and some more because I'd like to keep this fire suppression you know on the table for that funding um, and, you know y yes absolutely and I, I'm in favor of that too I think m making that more of a general account for uh, future priorities that we might come up with over the next few months, year. Um, the one thing, and I'm, I'm going to look at my finance director. I don't know if, Dave, you've been able to check on this. A meeting that I was on last week said that there was something that we had to submit maybe in October showing what our potential projects were. It wasn't something we have to commit to, but do we have to show the entire funding on that, Dave? Do you know what that form is? No, it's just a basic um, what we anticipate using the funds for, but it's not a full commitment. Do you think we can keep this amount in reserve for that, or do we, are we going to have to designate it for that, or do you know? Um, based on what I know, I, I, preliminarily we could identify certain uses, limit the scope, so we can state that it, you know, it's these identified uses, but it hasn't been determined yet exactly what they're for. Okay. But I just want to make sure that we're we're doing what we need to to meet the okay. guidelines. And then I would just ask that we'd add fire suppression mm -hmm. to that possible. It, Absolutely. We, we can always change our mind, too. Sure. Right. We can. Right. Yes. So can. This, this is not an in-stone thing. One of no. the other things I didn't want to do is put a big number up there for the county to go, oh, look at what the city of Placerville has over there. We'll take that for uh, for the homeless project, whatever mm -hmm. that might be. So I think it's it's negotiating from a very weak position when you say, okay, we're, <laughs> we have $700,000 that we got for this. Mm -hmm. so. yeah. You know, one thing that um, – because we didn't get the the grant, and it was in there. Was uh, I think it was a hundred thousand for a community grant, Correct. essentially. I, I'd ask uh, the council to consider maybe doing fifty thousand out of our dollars to for um, community grants for for folks. I mean, we're doing fifty thousand as part of the uh, business, uh, you know, because of what they suffered and what they did, and I think that's appropriate. But I also think. For those that are having a tough time, it's not a lot, but if we could allocate 50000 for um, some sort of community program, you know, maybe it's 500 or $1,000 per person or something, um, but that we would have a, a fund available for folks that uh, weren't able to, uh, to pay for their own, um, you know, mitigation efforts, uh, that we add something in for that as well. 
You mean for the for uh, clearing? For the clearing, clearing. yeah. Okay. Um, so in regards to the vegetation management, I agree with Jackie and I was really concerned about the ongoing maintenance. And we talked about this at length during our meeting. Um, one program that I think would be really cool would be for the city to buy the equipment and then off, you know, have it as a city service to clear residence properties at just, you know, the cost of the equipment and staff time, um, which would be way less than, you know, hiring a, a commercial outfit to do it. I also realize that is difficult. I mean, that would be starting a whole new program, which mm -hmm. is difficult when all of our staff are um, barely getting by with their current workload. So I, I, I mean, I, I totally agree with you on the, the continued maintenance issue, um, but I also just, you know, realistically um, understand kind of the state that we're in with staff. I, I feel comfortable giving, you know, allocating the funds as they're, they are in here um, and giving staff discretion to do more research about, you know, if it makes sense to purchase a couple pieces of equipment um, so that they can, you know, once the, the main clearing is done this year, they can better keep up with it. Um, but I, I do think that that's an important thing to keep in mind, that it's not just this one-time thing, um, you know, vegetation in five years it's going to all mm -hmm. be yeah, good back. back so, again, right. um, mm -hmm. and then in terms of the, the 760 set aside, mm -hmm. I feel comfortable, you know, with basically we, we only get so much this year and so much next year. So it's, if we take from this 446, um, you know, it's just like, there's some strategy that's going to go into how we spend that last 760 thousand um i'm fine with you know if you want to change the name so that it's not doesn't pigeonhole us into how to spend it and leave it more general but what i don't want to do is just chip away at it without looking at the big picture and kind of comparing all the projects that we might want to consider for that seven hundred and sixty thousand. so does that make sense mm -hmm. like i will i want to see them all together so that we can compare them with each other instead of yeah. just like Let's allocate fifty thousand from this time, and a yeah. hundred thousand, and until there's nothing left. That's that's my thought on that. So Dennis, yes, Go ahead. I, I want to um, piggyback on what Michael said. Uh, he came up with the same thing that question because I had the same concerns. I really, and I'm going to go back to Sue's comments and. Um, She's so true, and I know uh, Chief Cordero is going to agree with me too that our worst fire months are ahead of us. Um, and look what we've already experienced. And I don't see why. Um, if I mean, I consider this an emergency, and I don't see why we can't get some outside help. I mean, there's a lot of outfits out there that we could get additional help and be supervised by our departments, our staff, and. Um, get some of these things taken care of. I mean, we can't wait for grants. We can't wait for hiring more people. Um, I just think that this is kind of be, could be considered an emergency type situation. And I think there's maybe things in here that yes, we, we want, but maybe, you know, first things first. Um, and I, I just think this is crucial. Mm -hmm. I've, <clears throat> I've been working on seven acres for the last 10 years. <laughs> and uh, I'll tell you what, I, I, can, I, I know exactly what we're discussing because about five or six years into it, I can see where I need to go back in and start working on it again. But you get a solid five years. If you limit up good enough and you, you get all those that brush knocked down enough, really it's just a matter of knocking weeds down after that that really makes a difference. And that can go on for quite a while especially if you do a really good job of, of, of the initial approach. But we also have 47 acres. Is that the number that, you know, 45? No, no it's uh, 76 and change. 76 it's almost 77 change. acres. Yeah. So that's a, you know. Are you for hire? <laughs> if you have 50 years, I'll get it done. 
with Dennis. Yes. You know, I help brush the trail and, and do a lot of fire, and I will tell you three years later, in some areas, the scotch broom has taken over, which mm -hmm. is highly mm -hmm. flammable. Right. And so five years, I, I would argue with you on that point, depending on what comes back. Well, it depends. It also depends on how you take care of it. If you're able to go through with a with a mower, because mm -hmm. you can knock down the scotch broom with, mm -hmm. with mowers and stuff. Well, and that's I a whole just think with regular maintenance. I don't want to get into, <laughs> to, yes, with regular maintenance, I agree. Um, there's, there's probably a balance here, and I don't know quite sure how to how to do that because we have we have parks, we have public works, all in the mix here with no staffing, and yet we have the desire. And I and I agree with you 100% that having the equipment and using it is better than hiring it out and the money's gone completely. But here we are today with this fire danger and what we have going on, and. I'm, 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 I'm kind of voting for doing this right now mm -hmm. and then hoping more money comes on down the road to, uh, to look at equipment at this Can point. Can I make a couple Please. of comments? Mm -hmm. Number one, I just want to caution you. I mean, Rebecca and I were talking to a major tree uh, vegetation management contractor the other day in our area, and they told us if you're expecting to get it done in the next three months, it's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. uh, so most of this work, we, we hope, you know, if we can get the funding now, we would, you know, prepare the documents, go get bids uh, to get it done over the winter, which is really a good time mm -hmm. to do it anyway. There's yeah. less fire danger during that where the cutting and things are going on. But I just mm -hmm. want to make sure everyone knows that it's not going to happen, you know, immediately. Right. Yeah. The other thing is that um, we fully anticipate Terry's working right now to get information on where we failed on our grant. We fully anticipate applying again and going after funding and cleaning up where we need to, doing a better job. We'll work closely with Mark Egbert. And, and I really think that perhaps we talk strongly with the Plasterville Fire Safe Council and maybe we submit a joint application mm -hmm. this next time. That There may be some, some yeah. real advantage to doing that um, so that we both hopefully come up with a, a good, good plan and, and things that we can work together on. Um, but uh, I guess the, the last thing on the equipment that I would suggest is maybe you don't bite the bullet right now. Let us go back and talk as a staff and see what maybe we reduce that. I mean, we, we went for pretty much everything because of the grant that was there. Mm -hmm. But maybe we look at a smaller amount that is more of the essential stuff that really could maybe be used by the current staffing that we have to help keep that in place. Um, I've been talking to staff for quite some time, and I'm not sure exactly if this exact thing was in there, but I think it was, was just a simple, uh, maybe it's some sort of masticator, but something that can be driven on the trail and, and just cut those, mm -hmm. you know, three feet back on both sides of the trail mm -hmm. and keep that trimmed down. Uh, I think that would be a very simple thing and, and hopefully easy to, um, to, to, to do use for maintenance. And, and maybe even, you know, I know Councilmember Noah and I, before she was on the council, I talked quite a bit about. We did a lot of work on putting together a Friends of the Trail program that could volunteer to do some things if we had the equipment and the, and the supervision to make that happen. And so, you know, maybe that's something that plays into this too if we can get some of the equipment. So I'm not saying we, we count that out and we don't get any equipment right now, but I think maybe uh, if I could go back with, to staff and maybe refine what is really the priority equipment that that we have the staffing currently that that could make use of that and 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 be helpful to us if that's an option to you so. yeah yeah I you know just want to stress that I think uh, the fire danger the fire suppression should be one of our top priorities in the city you know I had Cal Fire come a few years ago and they said can I walk your property and give you suggestions and you know, after they, I agreed that this wasn't going to obligate me to anything, <laughs> you know, I let them go ahead and they gave me, you know, a full write-up, which was excellent, which I submitted to my insurance company. And I haven't had a problem with my fire insurance. And so I think, you know, all these things that we're talking about doing are also going to help our residents mm -hmm. with their fire insurance, you know, in the bigger picture also. So I just want to say this is one of my number one top priorities. So. Jackie, the Fire Safe Council has a couple people on there that will go, will do that, and it, it's uh, you know you just have to get in touch with them, and they they've been they've gone for training, and they can help folks uh, understand what needs to be done to their property. So that is available. <clears throat> Thank you, Patty. So one, I'll go real quick. So one of the things that I was um, wondering about 
we were talking about different ideas of, is the the fact that could we get a, any bang for our buck if we were to put money into um, working with private property owners I don't know how this fits into ARPA in terms of uh, enforcement and then going out and doing it getting our, we'll get a return on our investment eventually uh, but it'll take a while some of them might pay the fee up front some of them might have to have their property so you're talking about a fund uh, for us to go in and basically using code enforcement to right. clean up properties and then mm -hmm. Uh, we would try to re still recover that, but the fund would be there to right. uh, do the initial work. Or and I don't know how this would fit into the ARPA money, if it qualifies or not, based on everything we're looking at. But, you know, one of the biggest challenges we have with private property that don't want to comply or work is, mm -hmm. especially those that are, I don't, know, I don't know what the right word is, really bad, yeah. um, egregious. Yeah. Um, we don't we're, we don't have any uh, teeth we don't have any any way to go after them. we do have ways but we don't have the ability mm -hmm. in terms of staffing or or time i don't know how this would work into you know we might get a bigger bang for our buck if we could invest something in a program that would help go after those private property owners <coughs> that don't you involving litigation then sometimes well mm -hmm. uh, not really it's just code enforcement and we go out and do it and then we attach their property or they pay the bill and when i was on when I was on the fire board, we actually, uh, there were situations where, no, was that us? Or was that Cameron Park Fire? I think I sat in on some Cameron Park Fire board meetings where they actually did that one after them, and they actually paid the bill. Really? And they, you know, mm -hmm. some of them would just pay the bill. They just mm -hmm. didn't want to go out and do the work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So are, are you thinking, like, set aside 100000 into a fund that we use to do the work and then hopefully reimburse? Oh, yeah, we'll get we'll get it back. It's just a matter of how it might long. Be Fifty years on property yeah, tax. Their tax. Yeah, I, I, I think we would need to explore how that would yeah. work because we're you know we're required to spend the money, but right. if we're getting mm -hmm. reimbursed after the fact, does that well, qualify? Would, I think we'd have to take a look. But it at would that. be the establishment of a fund that would go on, you know, for perpetuity in theory. So it would reimburse to the fund that would right. be used to right. clear more property. I, That's one I think we would need to ask the question on whether or not that mm -hmm. would qualify. Correct me if I mean I'm wrong here, but I thought the, I mean some of our biggest offenders like Lumsden Ranch and the area behind um, the um, uh, mental health facilities, mm -hmm. I mean they're essentially entitled but worthless. So right. the folks that have them don't care, um, and so we could attach them. We could even eventually end up owning the property because they don't really. There's so I don't know how we'd ever get our money back on those properties that have the worst. Um, you know, offenders. It's always it's always on the sale of the property. It's attached mm -hmm. to it. It'll right. The property. I'm just saying though. But if the if the land's not developable, developable, mm -hmm. <laughs> then there's what are the odds of us ever? But maybe seeing... that's not what we have to be concerned about. Agreed. I'm just you saying know, that I that's mean, if we do it, we do we it. Maybe we just, just have to bite the bullet and just do it. I just you know? don't think we're going to ever see any I, money I, come I from it. I don't know if this idea is going to get any legs tonight, but it's certainly, mm -hmm. I, want, it's, I think it's worthy of consideration, even if it's not this fund, it's another fund, as we go in for grant money and such like that. So, Can, can I add to that? Uh, thinking about that, as you mentioned, it, where even as much or more value may be in that, it would be funding someone to actually do the, the code enforcement. as uh, Ms. Rodman brought up, the, the code enforcement for well, that, where we don't currently have enough staffing to, to right. do that effectively. And maybe there's the ability to fund, fund either a contract service or an employee for temporary for a two-year period mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, that would uh, perform that function. So mm -hmm. that may be something we can look at also. Okay. And, um, so where are we? <laughs> so I think we're right back where we started. <laughs> so I, I would make a, an attempt at a motion. Um, I would move that we pass this um, with the following changes, that we leave item 21 open um, for other, you know, just as a general um, unallocated funding right now, and we'll consider um, you know, we're interested in the Homelessness Navigation Center. We're interested in doing more for vegetation management, um, broadband, and, you know, if there's any other projects, and then we'll consider that all together, you know, as we have more information to work on those. Does that, does that meet with your 
wording, Dave, that you would uh, need? I, 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 oh, go ahead, Dave. Uh, Having the general scope of what you potentially could use the money for, I think that gives staff enough guidance to report to the state for those monies. Yeah, we're not committing the dollars; they're not being appropriated. We just have uh, the council um, gave general direction and potentially what that fun those funding could be used for. All right, thank you. I would just recommend as part of your motion, you're approving the the resolution that approves this uh, these allocated funding that's attached to the resolution. Yes. So, okay. okay, I'll second it. All right. Any any further discussion on this? All right. I want to thank staff for. I know we. I know Cleve took a lot of uh, <clears throat> arrows putting this together. <laughs> At the same time, I think I, I think we came up with a compromise with everybody that I think really is a is a good compromise. And and thank you, Cleve, and for your leadership on this project and all the staff who spent a lot of time putting their things together and then get it to our part and put it back together again to come up with this so thank you um roll call vote please council member Borelli? aye council member no aye council member saragossa aye vice mayor taylor aye mayor thomas aye thank you all right bringing it back i know where my agenda is okay item 12.2 review league of california cities 2021 annual conference resolutions and direct voting delegates on how to vote mr morse thank you mayor and council uh this year there uh, prior to the meeting uh, there are two resolutions that have been submitted uh, to the league for adoption um they can also there can also be resolutions submitted at the at the meeting but that rarely happens from what i understand so um the two resolutions one is related to um, sales tax distribution uh, we had a good presentation on on this from mr. Warren recently in the letter that we've forwarded to the state on the need to do that based on, on online sales and uh, the lack of legislation currently that defines how those are to be distributed so I think that one is kind of a given that we would support it and, and we recommend that uh, you support that one the second one as I mentioned in my uh, report doesn't really pertain to us because we don't have a railroad that comes <laughs> comes through our town um, but so I'm, I'm kind of open on that one but it does seem to make sense if you were to go through the full report look at some of the pictures that were submitted of you know trash along rail, railroads and stuff in other cities uh, I, I don't really see a reason why you know, we would be opposed to it so I'm, I'm fine supporting that one so uh, there's pretty detailed information in, in your mm -hmm. packet uh, that uh, on both of these and uh, with that, I'll answer any questions you may have. Do you want to tell what? what it, do you want to t tell what the, what that motion is? The well, the, the recommendation is to support to for the mm -hmm. for the the voting delegate to support. But what do they want to do with the railroad? What? Oh, they they want to. Well, I'm trying exactly. I mean, I read it, it, but yeah. I'm just thinking we should. Say they that. want it's it's more stricter penalties and the ability to okay. enforce the cleanup of those pro the railroad to clean up those properties. Um, so. It, and you know, a lot of those run along like 99. Mm -hmm. You know, um, some of the Different major areas. highways that yeah. this is very visible. True. Uh, the reading is operators are removing illegal dumping, graffiti, and homeless encampments that degrade the quality of life and results in an increased public uh, safety concerns for communities and neighborhoods that abut the railroad right away. Well, I just have some comments about that second one. You know, it's, it's kind of interesting when we start talking about the CPUC because they also were responsible for overseeing the PG&E lines that haven't <laughs> been maintained in the last 20 years. So <laughs> I, I have some issues with the, the CPUC in general. And doing their duties but also you know um, I wonder you know so they want to pass this resolution so what you're talking about is moving those people to someplace else and where's that going to be um, that I mean that w without a plan it's just redistributing the people and um, I always wonder where they're gonna go Thanks.
That's an excellent question. <laughs> I don't think anybody has the answer to that. Shall, here. shall we ask him? I, I <laughs> shall Kara? Yeah. Kara's going to be the voting <laughs> person. She'll have to stand up and ask that very same question. <laughs> well, I don't. I don't know that C CPUC is, can be in charge of uh, displaced people. It just like the, you know. Yeah. No plan. Right. <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe they have a plan, and we don't know about it, huh? It's talking about ability to address homelessness on railroads. Yeah. So I imagine the cities right next to them will also acquire those homeless people that just move it from one place to another. And that's that city's problem. Mm -hmm. um, and challenge. Problem. Yeah, <laughs> it is. Um, <clears throat> any further discussion on this item? If not, I'm going to go ahead and open it up for public comment. <laughs> All right, seeing that, I'll bring, seeing nobody approaching the podium for public comment, we'll bring it back, close public comment, and bring it back to the council for a motion or any further discussion. I move that we approve these two items for our delegate to vote on. Second. As resolutions. And I agree with Jackie that there is no solution to this, much like there's no solution to the homeless problem in this. Yeah. So with that, any further discussion? All right, hearing none, we'll go ahead and roll call vote, please. Council Member Borelli? Aye. Council Member No? Aye. Council Member Saragossa? Aye. Vice Mayor Taylor? Aye. Mayor Thomas? Aye. All right, thank you very much. Got it. Okay, Council reports from other agencies. We have, uh, we do have transit this time. We don't we have. have it. We didn't have any meetings. We did. We did. Mm -hmm. You were yeah. you were in close session, I think, the last meeting. Um, yeah, I did not like jot down notes very well. What what did we do in transit? <laughs> we um, we established an ad hoc committee for the last fiscal year budget review. Um, oh, we got right. an update about COVID. Um, there's the trip going back and forth. The the trip trip. That's been interrupted because of the mm -hmm. Caldor fire. Mm -hmm. um, and we approved the final budget. Approved the final budget. Thank yeah. you. It wasn't very exciting. Either. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I will pretty, say, pretty I, short. I took the, the uh, commuter bus down to Sacramento this time, and as opposed to just two people on it, there was five. Oh, wow. <laughs> so. that's, that's good wow, news. Wow, you're making heavy. We really want our commuters back, because that yeah. was a big, um, I mean, that was a big share of our ridership. That was like the money. They yeah, just, was. oh, the, the budget has just been really cut. Yeah. My understanding, though, is the state is actively trying to get their workers to come back, but um, you know, it's people it's, it's don't a, want uh, to. They don't want to come back, but <laughs> yes, they are trying. So I'm hoping to see that bus more filled in the coming months. Mm -hmm. All right, moving on to e Colorado County Transportation Commission. That was also a fairly light meeting. Um, the executive director, Woody Deloria, was evacuated. Um, everyone was kind of, you know, just the last meetings were kind of a blur because everyone was just in the midst of the Caldor fire um, chaos. We did get a project update on all of the projects in our area. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of great projects are on track, so that's, that's good to see. Um, Anyone else want to? I, I think one in, one project in particular was the Camino project. Yeah. It seems to really finally be moving along. They got that cleared for Apple Hill so that the road has reopened. Right. Um, the project is not done yet, but it is at least in a place where the road is open for for people. Right. right. The, it was a big effort to keep that in the two lanes instead of one in both directions. Correct. Yeah. Although it doesn't seem to be a problem right now, we could get it there. All right, uh, LAFCO. LAFCO, we're working on the recruitment of an executive officer and some temp help staff until we can get fully staffed there, and we created an ad hoc uh, for the fire MSR review. All right, thank you. Pioneer? Uh, yeah, both Pioneer and SACOG meet on Thursday. All right. Placerville Fire Safe Council. Um, I think you've heard tonight uh, all the stuff that they're doing there. I mean, they're, you know, okay. pretty active, so. Yeah. All right. Any Mayor, yes. Can I mention just quickly on Pioneer? Uh, hopefully, they're going to continue. There is a meeting tonight in El Dorado Hills regarding, you know, starting up 
uh, Pioneer. Uh, Are they, they're trying to inform the folks down there, right? Yeah, okay. yeah. And hopefully they'll, they haven't approached me yet, but hopefully they'll do one up in this area. I don't know if you've heard anything on that, Michael, but. Uh, they're supposed have, to do more than one, so yeah. we'll, we should talk, because we can request one. That, I'm pretty sure we'll get I it. I think it would be good to have one and start getting the information out. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I think the one meeting I did attend a couple months ago in your stead was to uh, I really impressed upon the importance of, of community engagement and uh, communication so that people have all the information they need to make a decision because in the void of that di that information they're going to come up with their own own ideas of what this pioneer energy is and why it's good and bad and it, they'll just it'll just be it'll run rampant on the internet and it'll all be wrong <laughs> so like so many other things um, <laughs> boy all right, uh, moving on, request for future agenda items. Anything? Anybody? I have a request. Um, I have had a phone call from um, Bill Quigley, who used to work for the city. I think a lot of you know him, but he lives up on Bluebell Court, and he's requesting that the fire gate up there be removed. And uh, I'd like to bring that forth for a, uh, a meeting and, and on our agenda to talk about the fire gate removal. It, it goes up into SC Court, you know, remember when all that um, was, anyway, he, um, Cleve, uh, is, that a, is that an item that should come before us or come before the Planning Commission? Um, I don't know if, the, I'll have to talk to Pierre. I'm not sure if that has to go to Planning Commission or not. I don't think it does. I think him and I talked about that. But do you mm -hmm. recall, you asked us to bring back an inventory mm -hmm. of all of the fire Great. gates. We mm -hmm. haven't been able to get to that yet. Uh, but this was one that if you wanted to take separate from that we could bring back as a separate item or you can wait until we He's really concerned able. because um, uh, Apple Hill coming up mm -hmm. and it's really um, That side traffic mm -hmm. impedes uh, where he lives and he's concerned for the safety of the neighborhood for them trying to get out yeah. So I don't want to get into a conversation about this because I'll know we'll get in trouble but uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, Is there is there a necessity to if before we make a decision to get in to get um, uh, commute the neighborhoods because it's not just one person that gets to decide this and I would want to have more information so is, is there enough time in the next two weeks to get this or Pro we bring probably it not I'm sure that we will want to notify the neighbors of mm -hmm. this action and then uh, treat it I don't know if it takes that formal public hearing but treat it like a public hearing and allow the neighbors to come and speak to I, it. I did if question him about that to. and he said that he has been in conversation with the neighbors so they're pretty much uh, right they think they have the support for it and if they do then it uh, I think it becomes a pretty simple task at that point. well and I do know that there's a reason why we put them in and it has to do with the design of any any development and things like that and traffic and all the rules around that and so yeah, I think so all that information would be important I don't want to discuss it but I think all that information would be important to bring forward as well in terms yeah, of just quickly the, some the, of the it is simply purpose. related to maybe one or two homeowners that really pushed it and, yeah uh, at least of the couple of them that I'm familiar with that's so, what we're being yeah, yeah okay. so, so, all right anyway it's good to know thank you uh, can we get a, any a consensus on that are we okay with that sure. I see one two three yeah, I'm, Four, okay, I'm okay with minutes. that. Just one one thing. I would really like to still get the inventory of all the right. fire we, we will and kind of address that, yeah. it as mm -hmm. a, um, you know, un a unit. But yeah. Okay. Okay. So we, will, we are putting I, that on somebody's plate that's going to have to not do something else it in order is, to get it that It is done. important. I though. think when we do it, you'll have to look at each one individually anyway so bringing okay. one before you get to the others right. I don't see a big issue with that okay. because they really are all independent other than you know they may all have a few reasons for why they were done but some of them a lot of them are really more unique in that that individual area so okay. yep. okay. all right. thank you all right uh, city manager and staff reports do you have anything further Cleve no, nothing more than just the uh, uh, the two uh, reports that are on two the, items your agenda. On All right, so, and let's go on to actually Chief Wren. Yes, Mayor. <laughs> <laughs> Does anybody have any questions or or comments regarding the uh, the police report? All right, seeing none. I do know that there was uh, moving on to item fifteen point two. 
Uh, just that there were some anomalies in the uh, in the reduction of service calls. And uh, with all the with all the from two th for August, so I know you've been super busy. And somebody, <laughs> hey, just have you been it. have you been doing anything in the last month? <laughs> <laughs> I've been enjoying a, a summer off. You know? Yeah, uh, I used to spending busy. time in the mountains, and um, yeah, not so fresh air though. Uh, affirmative. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor and Council. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's a good observation. There was a, a reduction in the call volume. Um, and what we noticed is with the Pollock Pines, Camino, and Pleasant Valley areas being evacuated for two to almost three weeks, while our ambulance calls continued, um, those stations really primarily sat idle because the, the vast majority of the residents did, did leave the area. So mm -hmm. for the, the personnel assigned to those stations, while they got a little bit of a reprieve, they still ended up putting in pretty long hours, but the call volume significantly dropped off. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of resumed back to normal operations with with the repopulation of those communities. Well, there wasn't any traffic accidents and medicals. And, all right, thank you. All right, I still found it. Okay, item 16, there's a long list of uh, upcoming items. You're welcome to read either on the internet or uh, on the back table here. And so it leads us to item 17, and that is adjournment. So I'm gonna uh, adjourn this meeting at, uh, what is it? 6:43 and I want to thank everybody for coming this evening and wish you have a good evening.